Hello, and welcome to a special episode of DSI Live. I am founder of Dental Speaker Institute and Dental Speakers Bureau, Vanessa Emerson. Excited to be with you here tonight to share a little information about virtual meetings. Change is in the air. We're experiencing the dawn of a new era. I'm sure you can feel it. With the COVID-19 pandemic and the associated economic challenges that have had an impact on our meetings industry, as well as most industries worldwide, we're all seeking different ways to meet, to educate, and to connect. Now, whether you're a meeting planner, a speaker, or a sponsoring partner, virtual meetings offer you a platform and a vehicle for bringing your essential content and our essential meetings to our industry, to dental practice owners and teams. At this moment in time, end of March, 2020, we're not sure what our meetings industry is going to look like on the other side of the COVID peak. But the question really should be, how will we do what we do in a different world? I think the writing is on the wall and it's time to reinvent the way we do meetings to embrace the age of the virtual meeting. Change is here and organizations that embrace this change have an opportunity to thrive. One thing I know for sure is that when people meet face to face, it empowers them to stand shoulder to shoulder. When people meet, a knowledge transfer occurs, collaborations are born, businesses grow and thrive and barriers are broken. There is no substitute for the in-person meeting. And I believe there will always be a need and a market for the in-person meeting. That said, I also believe that our meetings industry will be changed forever by both the situations created due to this virus and by our choices right here, right now. The day of the virtual meeting is here. It's likely that virtual meetings will hold a much higher value in the world that is to come. And it is essential that event planners, speakers, sponsors, and consultants lean into the virtual experience or be left behind. Now, the purpose of this recording is to share some essentials for facilitating virtual meetings, whether you're the planner, the sponsor, or the speaker. I'm finding in my work that I'm being approached by each of these groups asking for help with just some of the basics. How do I shift to this format? What are the best platforms out there? What do I need to know? Well, you'll find that as you dive into the internet, like I have over the last week or so, there is a myriad of resources and a lot of information and many choices. Now, I'm going to look away for just a minute to make sure that we're actually online. Looks like we are. Hey, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. I'd be happy to, to try to uh, address your questions. So there are three main formats for meetings in today's market. There's the live in-person meeting that we're so familiar with. There's also virtual online, um, I'm sorry, there's also recorded online content. And then there in that middle space is the virtual meeting. It's kind of a hybrid. It's a live meeting, but online. This is the difference. The virtual meeting is not recorded. There's been a little confusion around that. So today, let's talk about virtual presentations. We're not going to talk about the online recorded. Um, that'll be for another day, and we can um, certainly share platforms where you as um, meetings and, and speakers may want to put your online content. That's a great idea as we lean into this new, uh, new era. But today, we're going to talk about the virtual meeting. You know, we're actually doing one now a little informal live session on Facebook. You might also know virtual meetings as video conferencing, web conferencing, webinars, 
these type of terms. Let's start by addressing the elephant in the room though, shall we? What about CE? Well, now I'm not a CE expert around accreditation or certification. I picked up some things over the years, but that's not really my area of expertise. I'm gonna share with you my understanding based on what I've read, the experience I've had in almost 20 years working in the dental meetings industry, and also based on conversations I'm having with people I consider to be experts. My understanding is that all states recognize a live webinar or this virtual meeting as a live meeting, similar to being there in person. Now you're gonna to want to review the guidelines that your state dental board will have on their website. And you can ask them questions, especially if you're wanting to get CE for your local, local um, doctors and practices. The live virtual meeting does not typically require a testing component, whereas online would, like an online recorded, I should say, would. But for this type of meeting where we meet virtually and it's live, it does not need, require an, a, a test every hour. You can utilize tests and many other training tools. However, they're not essential. You do need to know who attended the session. And you're going to want to determine a way to illustrate that the attendee stayed for the entire session. Um, one idea that I've seen a couple of times suggested is that at the end of the session, you offer a Google Doc or some sort of um, document that the attendee who's still there at the end of the session could fill out and hand back to you virtually, of course, and then you can get them their CE. That would be one way to prove they were there at the end. Now, again, this is not an area where I will offer a whole webinar. It's, it's not my thing. There are people out there who do this much better than me. I defer to John Stamper and Sandra Berger with CE Exchange. This is something that they do all the time. Uh, Sandra has many, many years um, working in this area. So um, I've asked John and Sandra to do a live with us tomorrow night, uh, Monday, I think tomorrow's the 30th of March. And um, they'll be here on DSI Live to talk about that. And um, if you want to reach out to them personally, the website is ceexchange.io. And their emails are john or sandra at um, ceexchange.io. They're also sponsoring partners with our Jumpstart meeting, which thank you so much for, for being supportive of Jumpstart, John and Sandra. And their contact information is on Dental Speaker Institute's sponsorship page if you want to learn a little bit more about that solution. So CE, we're going to set aside, and we'll handle that more tomorrow night. Now, as far as um, recommended platforms, this is one of the questions I'm receiving the most recently is, do I go Zoom? Do I go, go to meeting? I, you know, they, there's others that are out there. What is the best? Well, you know, what I have found is that there are so many options, and it really depends on what you want to do and what type of meeting you're wanting to have. Um, but as I look through um, and have read extensively and looked at training videos and really uh, checked out um, all those that would be considered like a top 10 leaders, the two that um, clearly emerged for me as the leaders would be probably not a surprise to you. That would be Zoom and then the go to suite. There's go to meeting, go to webinar, go to training. Uh, they've been, of course, in this market for, oh, I don't know how long. I was using GoToMeeting 20 years ago, so they've been around a long time, and they offer a very robust solution. Zoom is newer in the market, but they also, Zoom is fun, it's easy, it's low cost. I'm going to co contrast and compare a little bit between those two for you. Now, some of the basic features of most web conferencing platforms that would Typically, these would be enough features for most people. You wouldn't have to go with something really robust or higher dollar amount. Um, it would be things like you want to be able to have your attendees join by the computer audio or by the phone. You want to be able to have um, high definition video and audio, file sharing, screen sharing. An interactive whiteboard is nice. They don't all offer that, but it's kind of nice to be able to have interactive type um, functions like instant messaging, polls, tests, evaluations, or some things that we're starting to see a lot more of with these type of platforms. Most record, allow you to record your session and they really offer, it's a really um, wonderful uh, solution for if you're wanting to make other types of recordings. I've used Zoom for many years to just hop on and make this type of a video and then upload it to Facebook, for instance. 
but most will allow you to record your session. Many will allow you to let uh, the participant raise their hand. And then uh, some offer breakout rooms. Now, Zoom's, Zoom Pro uh, is probably perfect for most meetings. It's around $15, $16 a month. But I think that's if you prepay for the year. It's super low cost. I use Zoom pretty much all day, every day, not exaggerating. <laughs> um, with Zoom, you're, you can have your own Zoom room. It's always the same URL. Um, with the Zoom Pro, you can have up to 100 people on your meeting. They have higher level plans that can accommodate up to 500 people. But even that Zoom Pro, that low level, will include those all those basics I mentioned earlier, even the breakout rooms. Um, and a fun fact about Zoom, I think it's fun anyway, is that they allow you to do virtual backgrounds. So if you don't want to have lovely cat towers <laughs> in your background, uh, you could bring in your own background. For instance, I, I pop up every time my sign, I could put, I could have a JPEG that has where you are seeing, it's backwards to me, let's see, where you're seeing the little um, icon up above me, I could do something in the background that has my branding, which is kind of cool. Um, it's, it, it's a little funky if you move too much or, you know, whatever, kind of it gets a little virtual weirdness, but but it's kind of fun. Um, and that can be coming really handy in certain situations where you don't don't want to have a bunch of clutter or something show. You can make it look like a nice office in the background. Um, what we have here is virtual real reality in, <laughs> in my office. So that's kind of a fun fact about Zoom. Um, in fact, Canva, I wanted to mention Canva.com. I'm sure a lot of you are using Canva right now for graphics. If not, check it out. Um, Canva is a great uh, option online, and they do have um, multiple Zoom background graphics you can download. But basically, it's a JPEG or a PNG you can get from any uh, stock photography uh, place. So, so that's kind of fun. So that's Zoom on the lower end, a lower price point, still has a lot of uh, robust options. Now, if if you're not doing, you know, an hour long training or you're, you know, for instance, I have a two day workshop that I'm taking to a virtual format. That's a long time to sit um, and listen to somebody just staring at a bunch of headshots. So I wanted to find something really robust that would allow me to utilize some of the adult learning um, type of uh, exercises and things that I've learned that I, that I need to infuse into those type of uh, presentations in order to help with retention and to be able to help just keep them with me. So I'm gonna use GoToTraining. I already have my account, we're learning it now. It, I've walked through training um, sessions with it. It's pricier, depending on which version you buy and depending on, you know, if you're a meeting that you're wanting to bring 500 to 1,000 people, you can do that with this type of a platform. Um, my meeting is only about 12 to 15 people. It allows you to do breakout rooms, but at a much higher level than what I could see that Zoom could do. Um, it allows me to, before the meeting, put people into table groups. And when it's time to work on an exercise, I can send them off where they only hear each other. I can give them an exercise, something to watch, like a video, a file to work on, a, 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 a um, image. You can give them things to work on. They can do that exercise and then come back and debrief with the group. They could debrief over there, however you want to do it. As a um, facilitator, you can hop into each table group and check on them and see how they're doing. It's really freaking awesome, actually. Um, and, and I had no idea that functionality existed. So I'm really excited to be using that. So that was one thing that really sold me on go to training. Now, go to training is the higher end option in the go to suite. So go to meeting would be your lower end, go to webinar and go to training. Um, you can go look at the for yourself for the prices. Prices is all over the place depending upon how many hosts, how many attendees. I mean, it's really low end all the way up to, you know, pretty pricey, uh, depending on what you're needing to accomplish. But one thing that I think is really amazing about go to training is how many years they've been doing this and they're still an industry leader. I mean, they really have a lot of um, experience and, um, and a really solid platform. Um, so let me see if there's anything else I need to say. Oh yes. Other things I really liked about go to training that I don't see that zoom does as well would be, um, meaning I said that in a, in a weird way. Let me go back and say that again. Zoom might offer some of this, but I felt like the go-to training offered a more robust, more robust options on these. Um, for instance, you can register your attendees with your go-to meeting um, options. And on the go-to training option, 
You're able to customize your registration form. You can link that up, integrate it with PayPal and be able to take payment and then create all of your, um, it's like event software, right? So that it will send people the, the information on how they come into the meeting. You can give them all the notes they need ahead of time. It's pretty cool. Um, it allows you to manage your materials handouts or files, things that you want to give them could be preloaded so that when they come in on the little, um, it's not a dashboard, it's like, I don't know what they call it, the long, <laughs> with all the commands on the side, you can, there's a place for materials where you can pop open and they can download to their system. Um, it also integrates with Google Drive um, and to be able to like share files right there during your meeting is pretty cool. One other really awesome thing, especially for our meeting planners here, or those who, uh, speakers who are wanting, or consultants who are wanting to be able to give CE credit for their virtual trainings with the GoToTraining Pro platform, and my ear just popped, allergy time. <laughs> um, with the GoToTraining platform, you can issue a certificate uh, to attendees through the platform. So afterwards, it can issue a certificate to them, which would be really helpful for on the CE side. Also, the go to training, um, you can tell I'm pretty sold on this. Um, the reporting and the analytics are the bomb. You can tell that John Smith entered at a certain time, left at a certain time. You can tell the percentage of time that he was active in your um, session, meaning he was uh, attentive is the word they used. So some of that time, John might be off, uh, you know, looking at his email or something else online and it lets that you know who's really paying attention and you can see that in real time. So it's pretty cool. Go check it out. It is a little pricier, but if you are selling um, webinar, I'm sorry, like workshops, like a, a day or two workshop, I think you probably, you, we should be able to price those workshops at a point where this is a, a, a no brainer. Um, and for our organizations who are bringing in, you know, all of their members, I mean, this is way cheaper than meeting space, right? You know, 150 to 300 months. So I mean, I was looking at $600 and that was a great deal for two days at the meeting I was going to do. So I think it's a really good option for those of you who um, are going to start offering more of your own workshops. And that's a really good idea right now, period. So those are some of the differences between Zoom and GoToTraining. I'm not going to go into a lot more detail than that. Um, I would encourage you to do your own research and um, first decide what is it you're wanting to do? How long is your meeting? Uh, how many people do you want to have there? I mean, really get a good feel for what you want and that will help you know which of these uh, solutions is best for you. So I also have been asked to share some tips on how um, how they can make their meetings more successful. So I pulled together my own short list of tips I'll just share with you real quick. And these will be available on our websites, Dental Speaker Institute, Dental Speakers Bureau, and the Dental Speaker will have a, on the homepage a special section for virtual where you'll have this, this recording as well as these tips. So before the session, there's quite a bit you need to do. It's actually, this is the longer list. Um, and I was just talking about this. It's really about thinking about what are you doing? Like prepare your agenda, determine how much time you need, when, when to start, when to stop, you know, all of those details that you'll need to, um, when you um, and advertise this or, you know, share it with your members. So then you'll want to choose your virtual platform. So for me, I have two. I could use Zoom Pro for certain things. I could do go to training. So you also might end up with multiple platforms. Some people use Microsoft Teams. I found that that's really it, it felt to me like better for maybe working with consultant, working with a team. It's really more for like the same people um, every time it felt to me like versus trying to do um, meetings there. And there are many other options. So determine which of your platforms would be the right fit for this particular meeting you're planning. Um, and then as the day is here and you're ready to set up, you know, you want to make sure you dress appropriately and ensure that your background is uncluttered and, and appropriate for the setting for this particular type of meeting. Um, you might want to use a background uh, we talked about on Zoom. Uh, when you get ready to start your meeting, you're going to want to be sure that you close all of your other programs in your browsers to conserve your computer's resources and ensure you're in a well-lit, quiet area. Now, utilize a strong source of light in front of you. Um, I have, for instance, a dimmable ring light, which is, it's pretty big. It's probably almost, well, it's at least a foot and a half tall. And I got it on Amazon for about 90 
dollars about two years ago and I use it every day on my desk. It's amazing. And it's dimmable. So you can, you can turn it up and get more light coming right on my face or not. Now I have mine just a little to the side, which works best with my, um, you know, my layout here, but especially as the host, the facilitator, the teacher, you're going to want to have that on you, but it helps if everyone can have a well lit rather than backlit, we want to have them front lit. Uh, and so that's one, one option. And, you know, they have a, a bunch of those on Amazon, all different sizes and all different price points. You don't have to spend $90, but they're the kind that you put a little phone in and you could do, you know, Facebook lives with. All right. And then, um, You'll want to position your webcam at eye level or slightly above eye level. So I technically should have mine slightly higher. <laughs> and so we don't have to do the looking up the nose thing. Um, and then you want to encourage all of your attendees to, and yourself to come in with a headset or earbuds um, with the microphone. Um, or dial in via the phone. When, when I do a teleconferencing or this type of a, a live, I normally just use my little, I think it's a Plantronics um, Bluetooth, what would work as well too. So this works really well. And they're like $27 on Amazon. Um, and it's easy. I can still hear out of this ear. You know, it's not the big uh, cuffed um, headset. Just depends on your preference. But what I have found is that it's essential that every person on the call um, on the meeting have um, a headset that they can plug into their computer or they dial in. Otherwise, we pick up every crinkling of a potato chip bag or the dog barking or all of those things. So it would be important that everyone know to have the headset or earbuds um, with the microphone built in and uh, or to dial in, be prepared to dial in with the earphone. Uh, and then you want to encourage them to show up early. If you're scheduled to start at nine, ask them to show up by at least 845 because you might have some people who are struggling, uh, especially as we start doing more virtual conferencing and dental. Um, our millennials will probably have no trouble, but uh, I, I'm a boomer. <laughs> so us boomers, sometimes we struggle a little bit more and we might need a little more help knowing uh, what to do because it's newer. It's newer for us to do. So I would recommend that you as the meeting planner uh, show up 30 minutes early so that you can have your ducks in a row that you've tested out. Everything seems to be working. You've got your polls in there, your tests, you've uploaded your files, you've done everything you need to do. So as people come through, come in, you can um, help them. I also just thought of one more thing I need to add to my list is it's, it's really helpful to have an, uh, a helper be there with you as well. So that if you're facilitating the meeting, somebody else can be there to help with challenges. So if you have an administrative assistant or you know someone else in the organization that can be there with, um, that understands the platform and can help people uh, and let people know who that person is. So that helps you get ready for the session. And then during the virtual session, um, some tips would be to keep your microphone on mute until it's time to speak. So not you as the presenter, but the attendees. Um, you as the presenter can mute everyone, but um, it would be good to just remind people to mute if they're not talking. And then um, also it's really important for our attendees to be reminded to listen to the other participants. And then when they speak, speak clearly and concisely. We, in this type of a format, we want to expect delays and move at a slower pace. You know, sometimes the internet might make it a little choppy and they might miss some words or, you know, even this platform I'm using right now, BeLive.TV, I found in the last week or two as so many more people are going virtual, it's slow to get started. And so when I, when my um, video goes live, I actually wait a couple seconds and then I say some things that is okay if it gets cut off because I found that a couple sentences can be cut off before it actually connects to Facebook. So just expect that with internet, there are tend to be delays. So um, just plan to, you know, move things along at a slightly uh, slower pace um, and then allow for a two or three second delay um, after someone speaks so we don't end up talking over the top of each other. For our attendees, it's also important that we use attentive body language. Um, this is a hard one for me is try not to move excessively because I tend to fidget. 
Um, but it's really distracting uh, when you have multiple heads um, on in front of you and, and one person's like eating and talking to the person behind them. And there's all this and then all the focus goes on that one person. So it's really important that we all try to, you know, as much as possible, be attentive. Um, and this is why it's also really important to build in some breaks. <laughs> if you can if you tend to go very long or plan to go very long, be sure you have some breaks where they can do something to move and like let let, let loose a little bit. Um, and lastly, you know, participate. Um, I would encourage our attendees at, at these meetings to participate and, you know, and enjoy the process. It's actually, um, it's pretty exciting that we're going to be able to start using technology in a, in a lot more, um, uh, not functional is not the right word, but this would be more, much more engaged. And it's going to be more empowering to us to be able to use this technology that's already out there that we'll be able to use in our industry. So um, these tips are going to be, be posted on the websites. If you'd like help moving your meeting or your training sessions to a virtual format, we'd be happy to share um, what's worked for us and help provide some guidance. You could reach out to info at thedentalspeaker.com. We're happy to help. This might also be a good time to mention that the speakers at Dental Speakers Bureau, and I'm sure I can speak for Dental Speaker Institute as well, that I think pretty much everybody's available to go virtual nowadays since we're not meeting um, in person. The only situation would be likely if um, it was going to be a hands-on clinical workshop. Of course, that would not be <laughs> possible, but pretty much everything else we should be able to take to a virtual format. And so just know as a planner out there um, that Dental Speakers Bureau, Dental Speaker Institute both have, um, we have a couple hundred speakers there that would all be uh, interested in, in helping you through this time. So be sure you reach out to them. I am Vanessa Emerson, founder of Dental Speakers Bureau and Dental Speaker Institute, and we are here to help. We're here to serve you. This is a defining moment for us, right, in this time. And I want to encourage each of you to give deep thought to how your organization can continue to serve the changing educational needs of our dentists and our teams. How can you reinvent and remain relevant as a meeting planner, an association, a corporation, an educator? Who will you be now? And what challenges will you solve for today's and tomorrow's dental professional? I invite you to join us. Join the we Volution speaker, sponsor, planner, dental meetings professionals. It's time. It's time for us to unite, to renew, and rise. We are better together, and together we will thrive. Be well. <laughs>